everyone, it's Julianne here for Honey Bee Stamps, and welcome back to my channel. It is officially September 1st, and in my house, that means all things Halloween. So I'm super excited to be sharing with you all that I will be doing a Halloween card making series right here on my channel. And to start off, I'm going to be showing you how I created this Boo card using some of my favorite products from Honey Bee Stamps. And those products include the Fabulous Sentiment Stamp Set, the Bee Bold Alpha Honey Cuts, the names Jack Honeycuts, and finally my all-time favorite, the Pumpkin Patch Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. So let's get started. I started out by stamping two of the pumpkins from the Pumpkin Patch Stamp Set using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I am sorry I didn't realize my camera wasn't on while I was stamping those, but what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be masking over that larger pumpkin using a post-it note, and I'm going to stamp an additional pumpkin on top of that, and once I remove that post-it note, you will see that it looks as though the second pumpkin that I just stamped is behind the larger pumpkin. Next, I'm going to start working on my Copic coloring. Now, last week I did post a video where I created some pumpkin coffee-shaped cards, so I am going to be using the same color combinations as I did in that video. I'm just going to be sticking with the orange colors for my card today. But I will have that video linked at the end of this one if you are interested in any of the colors I used in that card. Now for my first pumpkin, I'm going to be starting off by coloring it in using my lightest shade of E97. And then I'm going to be coming in adding depth and shadows using YR27 and E09, doing a flicking motion from the bottom and top of the pumpkin, flicking towards the center. Finally, I will be coming in with my darkest color of E18, adding more depth before making my way back down to my lightest color. Doing this flicking-like motion towards the center of my pumpkin will create a really nice highlight in the center of the pumpkin, which is what I was going for. Next, I'm going to be coloring in the pumpkin that is behind, and I'm going to be doing the same as I did before, but this time instead of my lightest color being E97, I'm going to use YR27. And that's going to make it look as though the pumpkin is a little bit darker since it is in the back of my scene. For my third pumpkin, I'm going to be coloring it in using some yellows and oranges to give this pumpkin the illusion of glowing and to make it look a little more spooky from the others. Now I'm going to be doing the same process as the other two pumpkins with my coloring, but I'm going to be using Y17 as my lightest color, YR15, YR04, and YR07 as my medium shades, and finally YR18 as my darkest color. Now as I'm making my way back down to my lightest color, instead of coloring over everything using that Y17, I'm going to come in with Y18, which is going to make my pumpkin even more yellow than orange. Next, I'm going to be using some of the dyes that are included in the Names Jack Honeycut set. And I'm going to be using those dyes in order to cut out the eyes, as well as the mouth of my jack-o'-lantern, as well as using some of the ghost dyes that are also included in this set in order to create a cute little ghost die cut. Now, once I've run all of those through my die cutting machine, you can definitely see how using those dies on my pumpkin make a huge difference in how he looks from taking him just from the pumpkin that I colored in earlier to this spooky looking jack-o'-lantern. Now off camera, I did fussy cut out my two pumpkins that I stamped together since the coordinating dies would no longer work for them, but I did use the coordinating dies in order to die cut out my jack-o'-lantern and I decided here that I really didn't like how the white border that the die leaves behind looked in my scene. So I'm just going to come in with my black Copic marker and I'm just going to color around the edges of my pumpkin and then I'm going to move on to creating my background for my card. For my background, I'm going to be using a spider web stencil that I had in my stash and I'm going to be doing some Distress Oxide ink blending using some Wilted Violet onto some light purple colored cardstock. Now I have sped up this process quite a lot in editing, but I'm just going to be doing my ink blending using some blender brushes and I'm going to be adding that wilted violet in the center of each one of those spider webs as well as around the edges of my stencil and I'm going to be fading that color out. Now once I had all of that wilted violet down, I'm then going to peel back my stencil and this is where I realized I really wanted to add in some more shadows and depth into my background. So I'm just going to be placing my stencil back down and this time I'm going to be coming in with some black soot and I'm going to be adding that color around the outside edges of my stencil and then I'm going to be coming back in with some more of that wilted violet to blend everything in together. Mm -hmm. 
Next, to make my background even more spooky and Halloween-y, I'm going to be placing my background in my splat box. And I'm going to be splattering some distress paint and black soot as well. And I'm going to be splattering that all over my background. I think that the splattering really adds to the Halloween aspects of my card. So I'm going to be doing this quite heavily throughout. Once I have my background all finished, I'm just going to set that off to the side to dry, which really didn't take all that long. And then I'm going to start working on assembling everything together. Now off camera, I did do some additional die cutting using the Be Bold Alpha dies, where I ran the letters B and O through my die cutting machine a total of three times using some black cardstock and once using some black glitter cardstock. And I'm just going to be adhering each of those together using some liquid adhesive. Now adhering all of those letters together is going to give my sentiment some really nice added dimension. And using some more of that black cardstock, I also ran that through my die cutting machine, but this time I ran that through with my coordinating die for my jack-o'-lantern from the pumpkin patch stamp set. And I'm gonna run that through a total of three times as well. And I'm going to be adhering all of those die cuts together. And then I'm going to be adhering my jack-o'-lantern on top of that. Next, I'm gonna be adhering my background panel to a black card base that I did trim down to six and a half by eight. And I scored at four in order to create a mini slimline card. And I'm just going to be adhering my background panel directly down using some liquid adhesive. But you could definitely add some foam adhesive to this step in order to create some added dimension in your card. Next, I'm going to be playing around with all of the elements of my card, including the pumpkins, my die cut letters, as well as that cute little die cut ghost. And once I've decided on the placement of where I want everything in my card today, I'm going to start adhering everything down. I'm going to start out by adhering the cute little die cut ghost, and I'm going to be adhering him behind those pumpkins in the center of my card. And then I'm going to be adhering both of those pumpkins that I colored in earlier directly on top of my ghost. And then I'm going to adhere my jack-o'-lantern in the center of both of those pumpkins. And then I'm going to be deciding on the placement of my die cut letters on either side of my images in order to spell out the sentiment boo with my images acting as the middle O in the sentiment boo. Now using some more of that liquid adhesive, I'm going to be adhering a few of the black opal confetti mix that Honeybee Stamps offers. And I'm going to be adhering those confetti pieces throughout my background. And then to finish off my card, I decided that I needed something on the inside. So using the Fabulous Sentiment Stamp Set, I stamped the sentiment Happy Halloween onto some lime green colored cardstock, as well as I used the Names Jack's Honey Cuts again in order to die cut out an additional ghost. And I'm going to be adhering both of those onto the inside of my card using some more liquid adhesive. And that's going to complete my oh so cute and spooky Halloween card for today. I just love how this card came out and I hope that you do too. Let me know if like my house, you start decorating for Halloween today as well. I would love to know all the Halloween lovers out there like myself. I want to thank you all so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I hope that you really enjoyed my first card for my Halloween card making series. Make sure to come back each week for an additional card. I will be adding them all to a playlist so they are easy to find. But make sure if you liked this video to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe for even more card making ideas. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today, they will all be listed and linked down below in the description box. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and happy crafting. 